Hello everyone. Today uh, we are very honored to have the opportunity to uh, present our final project. Uh, my name is Chen De Huang. Uh, this is my group group member uh, Meng Yang Wang and uh, Bing An Zhao. And uh, our project is uh, separate to three parts. The first part we will uh, introduce something about the stock volatility. And second is about the binomial tree option pricing. And the last one is the Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, the first part is the stock volatility estimation. Uh, the stock volatility, uh, as we all know, is uh, measured to uh, measure the uh, variation of the stock returns. It is usually uh, used to present the um, uh, fluctuation of the stock price uh, during a specific period. Uh, in industry, uh, it is usually it is widely used, used to measure the uncertainty in the future or the risk in the future. Uh, there are many methods to, uh, to calculate the volatility. And uh, the, 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 ver uh, the simple way and always the popular way is to use the standard, uh, standard deviation of the star returns to, uh, in the past, in the uh, historic data to estimate the volatility. And we can we call this kind of volatility is the historical volatility. And this is this is the equation uh, how to use how to uh, calculate the historical volatility. And uh, the mu here is the uh, stock returns, and n is the observations we uh, use in the data. And uh, s here is the estimation of the standard deviation. It, it, it presents the uh, annual. Uh, volatility and uh, if you want to uh, get the uh, daily or some monthly you need to uh, divide the divide the um, square root of the time so you can get the specific uh, a specific uh, uh, volatility and also uh, if when you get the estimation of the volatility you can uh, calculate the standard error by this by this equation um, uh, in our project, we separate the uh, we test two periods of six stocks. The first period is uh, April the fifteenth, two thousand eleven to uh, twelve uh, two thousand twelve, and the second period is two thousand twelve and to two thousand thirteen. And uh, uh, there are two ways to uh, calculate the returns. One is continuous ways. Uh, it is the log uh, of the um, ST divided by the ST minus one, and the second one is the discrete way. Uh, you can see the equation here. And in our project, we use the second way, uh, discrete discrete equation. And uh, the table shows here is the historical volatility of the stocks. And uh, we we can we can find that. Uh, we can find that 2001, 2002, the volatility is uh, is always is generally uh, greater than 2012 to 2013 uh, for most stocks. And uh, the this shows the standard error the estimation. Uh, standard error uh, measures the measures the accuracy of the estimation. Uh, we can see most of uh, the standard error is between 1% uh, to 2%. That means that uh, there is some, um, the variance will, uh, uh, will, will be uh, varied between uh, 2%. Uh, 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 we can see that uh, the historical vol volatility, assume that the volatility of the entire past uh, uh, period is constant, but we know in real life that uh, uh, the volatility is changed every 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 day. So it, it means this kind of assumption is not good uh, applied in in the real life. So uh, we need to find a, a more accurate and good measure to estimate volatility. There are many way many models uh, that. The popular one is the Gauge model. Gauge model uh, provides a very ba better way to estimate volatility because it uh, makes volatility can to be time varying. Uh, it's uh, 
this equation shows the uh, Dutch model. Uh, it means that the volatility today is uh, is uh, affected by the, the volatility in the past and the re return square in the past. Uh, how to implement this model? Uh, generally speaking, you can use uh, many uh, methods to uh, get the estimation alpha and beta, but the most popular way is to use the MLE maximum likelihood estimation to estimate uh, these two parts. And then you can calculate the uh, 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 volatility uh, everything. And uh, then let, let, let us introduce, uh, let me introduce uh, Moya Wang to give the general idea of the binomial tree pricing. Uh, uh, I will introduce. Uh, uh, I will uh, introduce how to calculate the auction price and stock price using two models: binomial tree auction and uh, binomial uh, binomial tree and the Black Shoes model. Uh, first, I will introduce the Black Shoes model. Uh, the Black Shoes model uh, auction price uh, uh, used to calculate the European auction, uh, uh, European put and call options. Uh, and uh, it does not need to pay a dividend or make other distributions. Uh, and the stock price, uh, we know it follows the uh, geome uh, geometric Brownian motion uh, with constant volatility. Uh, and the geometric Brownian motion, uh, the formula of this uh, Brownian motion, uh, geometric Brownian motion is, uh, is like this. Uh, and the, uh, the uh, S is the stock price and the uh, is the uh, uh, average uh, return and the uh, uh, sigma is the volatility and the this uh, is the part follow the winner process. Uh, and this is a black shoes formula. Um, uh, it's it's uh, not a cumulative normal distribution. Uh, and it's, uh, it's like this. You can use the, uh, this formula to calculate the uh, auction price. Uh, uh, now we will introduce the uh, uh, binomial, tre uh, binomial tree model. Uh, the binomial tree model uh, break down the time to its uh, expiration, uh, and uh, uh, it uh, it is a potential um, potentially uh, very uh, to calculate uh, use the time uh, time intervals, and is uh, and the uh, it's, it's calculated from the uh, from the present present to the uh, expiration, um, and each step uh, we assume the stock price um, will move up or up and down, and uh, we will also use volatility and time to expiration. It's the stock price. When we calculate the auction price, uh, we will uh, calculate from the uh, expiration to the present, uh, from the that is to say from the last uh, last note to the first node. Um, and the option price at each step uh, I used to uh, derive the option um, prices as the next step. Um, uh, it is based on the prob uh, probability for the stock price uh, and the stock price will move up and down. And also we will use the risk free rate and the time interval. Uh, this is the uh, this is a formula to uh, calculate the binomial tree mo uh, binomial uh, model. Uh, for uh, for example, we uh, we can uh, we consider the one step binomial tree. Um, um, the uh, the payoff is uh, uh, because the portfolio is uh, risk neutral. Uh, so the the payoff is the same. Uh, the, uh, the mu is the um, parameter when the price goes up, and the d is the parameter by which the price will go down. Uh, this is the shares. The shares uh, is equal like this. And we can get the final value. Final option value is like this. It's the present value uh, of the um, uh, present value of the probability multiplied by the uh, f mu and plus the uh, y minus probability um, multiplied uh, multiply by fd. 
and this is a, uh, the P is a prob uh, is a prob probability the price will go go up. Um, now uh, then we will uh, compare these two models, uh, the uh, black shoe model and the binomial uh, tree model. Uh, for uh, first, the black shoe model has a very uh, very high speed. It can calculate um, the very large number of option price in a very short time. Um, but binomial tree model has very low speed. Uh, 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 it, uh, even with the very fast uh, personal computers, uh, it's not practical to uh, calculate the uh, selling surprise in very few seconds. Uh, for the advantages of the binomial tree, uh, I think it can be used to price American options. Um, uh, uh, and but for the black shows, it can only be used to uh, price the uh, to calculate the European uh, uh, European options. It can't be used to calculate the American style options. Um, and also, I think the uh, the difference is that the black shows uh, model is uh, is can can used to calculate the continuous time uh, continuous. Uh, continuous stock price, uh, continuous continuous price uh, on the continuous time period, <laughs> but the binomial tree uh, will be used to calculate on the discrete time period. Uh, and also, we have the exception. Uh, oh, the exception uh, of this uh, of the black shoe model is that if we uh, if we uh, there are no dividend paid uh, in the uh, in the, in the option, in the option, then the European option and American option will have have the same option, uh, will have the same price. No, uh, no. Uh, uh, so, in this, in the, uh, uh, in this case, the black shoes will, uh, can be used to calculate the uh, American options. Uh, uh, then we uh, use the uh, Lanzo step to come uh, to. Compare these two, uh, these two models. Uh, one way, uh, one the step is very, uh, very small. Then the difference uh, between the binomial tree and the black shoe uh, is very, uh, is very large. But when we use the, uh, when we use the step, we use, uh, use a, uh, a large, uh, large step. Then the difference will be, uh, will become smaller between this. Uh, these two models. Um, uh, also, I uh, I think uh, the the uh, option price calculated by the binomial tree is a little uh, always for, uh, higher than the price calculated by the black shoe. It's because the uh, binomial tree is used to calculate the American uh, American option. Uh, you know, an American option an uh, American option can be excised at any time. So. Uh, the price, uh, this price will be higher than the black shoe, uh, than the uh, than the price calculated by black shoe because black shoe can use to uh, can only be used to calculate the European options. Uh, European option can only be excited uh, at uh, time to maturity. Uh, uh, so uh, the uh, next question: How to? What is the difference? Difference between the CRR model and the G uh, and the uh, zero uh, rot models. Um, uh, I think when we calculate the uh, when we calculate the binomial tree, we always use the CRR models. It is a common method. Uh, and GR model we assume that uh, the uh, the weight is equal. Uh, the GR model is a very uh, specific case of the CRR models. Uh, then we can get, get the mechanics of the CR models. Uh, we assume the uh, we get the third equation. The mu equals the one minor uh, now uh, divided by the d. Um, then we can uh, in the CRR model when we uh, we use these three equations, the, uh, this equation and the mu and the d to calculate the probability of the uh, upside. Uh, up Uh, this, this, uh, 
these parameters P, mu, and D uh, in equation, then in this equation, um, tell us uh, over a short period of time, the binomial model uh, will match the mean and the variance of the set in a risk-free, uh, in a risk-free world. Um, and uh, and as we will be seen shortly, uh, the multi-step model uh, of the other, uh, underlying set is symmetric around the uh, around the starting price as uh, as here. Then we, have, uh, we can see the GR model. Um, in the GR model, we assume uh, they have the, uh, we have the equal prob probability, and the probability is equal uh, 0 0.5. Um, this model is different from the CRM model because uh, in the CR model, we uh, get, the, uh, get the probability from the, uh, from the, from the mu and d. Uh, we can calculate the p, but in the GR model, we uh, get the mu and d from the uh, probability. We use this probability, this equation, to calculate the mu and, and d. Uh, and in the, uh, in the, uh, in, in this, uh, this, in this model, uh, we, uh, um, we, we generate a price, uh, price tree and use it for, uh, we use it, we use it to price the options. And also we can have the, uh, because you know the, uh, the probability is 0 0.5, actually it's not the risk neutral. Uh, so if we want to have the uh, risk neutral portfolio, uh, we will uh, pay attention to the, uh, to the GI model with the risk neutral uh, neutral pro uh, portfolio, uh, but uh, for the short, for the time limits, we will not introduce the uh, the GR model with the risk neutral. Um, uh, uh, this is the third question. Uh, we use the class structure to uh, recalculate the uh, binomial tree model. Then we get the, uh, this output. Uh, uh, we can see the uh, we can see the uh, the binomial price of the put option is five point four uh, and the, uh, and the, when we use the reaction model is four point four point six so we can put can, uh, the by the price calculated by the binomial tree is a little higher than the reaction uh, model. Uh, it's always like this because the uh, a marketing option can be excised at any time, so it's a little high. And this is a caution. It's a uh, uh, how the difference uh, calculate uh, the difference between the binomial price uh, and the relation uh, relation price is a little similar than the put option. Uh, then we will. Uh, uh, then we draw the uh, uh, binomial tree uh, on the both time steps. It's like this. Uh, for the option price, it's always uh, it's always go uh, when the time uh, when the, um, the the last note of the option price will be uh, will always be higher than the uh, than the than the uh, than the uh, than the reason for put option. But for the call option, the, uh, the, upward, uh, the upward, uh, upward price, uh, call option, the upward price will be higher than the, uh, than the, uh, than the, than the price before. It's for the call, it's for the call option. It's for the uh, put option. Uh, now let my partner to introduce, uh, Bing Lan to introduce uh, Mount Carlo simulation. Thank you. Uh, now I will talk something about Monte Carlo simulation. First, what is Monte Carlo simulation? Monte Carlo simulation is a method of computing algorithm that can relies on repeated random uh, sampling and running simulations many times. Uh, 
It is widely used in nowadays because it has so many advantages and I will just list two. The first advantage is that it is very efficient because the computing uh, computing speed is very fast and you can just compute uh, similarly like uh, 10,000 10, times within uh, one second and uh, it is impossible for human being to do this thing. Also, it can solve some problems without the closed form solutions and it actually helps a lot to solve these problems because in real life there are many problems that we don't know the closed form solution and we also need to know the, the trend or the uh, solution. So, it is broadly applied in business and finance, such as simulate the sequence with uncertainty. And here are two examples. We can use the Monte Carlo simulation to simulate the stock prices and also the option, option prices. Uh, here I just gave an example about uh, stock price and uh, this chart is from Yahoo Finance. It is the uh, last year stock price of Apple. And from this chart we can see the stock price fluctuates a lot and uh, actually you don't know what, uh, what the close form about this process. And uh, this is a process with uncertainty and uh, this is what we want to analyze. In our theory, we use a model that uh, we think the return rate is the difference between the stock price uh, next time minus the stock price today divided by the uh, stock price today. And uh, our assumption is that the, the rate of return follows some normal distribution. The second assumption is that we think the expectation of the return is mu times the interval. And then we assume the variance of x is uh, sigma square uh, times the interval. Our, our theory thinks that when the interval goes close to zero, the stock price process is, it follows this equation. And uh, you can see that the drift part is this. The mu is the drift part. And uh, also, it follows some winner process. It's like the variance uh, is dependent on the time. Then, we can calculate the, the difference about s, and then use this to calculate the next time stock price. To be specific, the epsilon t here follows the a normal distribution, uh, it actually the standardized the normal distribution. Then we want to simulate the stock price in three business days. Uh, this, in this problem, we use the average return from 2012 to 2003 as our uh, mu, and then we use the volatility from first one as our uh, stock volatility. This chart is uh, about the initial price, the mean, and volatility of these two stocks. And from this chart, we can see that the mean of these six stocks is very close to zero, which is also uh, the real life. Then we can see the volatility is about 0.2. We, then we choose the simulation steps n equals to 10,000 because uh, previously, we in our model, we think the delta t should be very close to zero, and this should be in a very small time interval. So we try to make the n as big as possible, and so our interval is as small as possible. So we set the delta t as a three business day, uh, divide by the uh, divide by the uh, base the trading days in a whole year and then divide by our n, our simulation steps. So our delta t is very small, you can see from this. And this is our simulation result about Apple uh, in the next uh, three business days. From this chart, we can see that in this, we use four trials and these four trials result as different in the process. Um, they fluctuate in different directions, but 
you can notice that at the end, the, up, uh, the uh, downside and upside are really the same. And uh, next, we will try more trials. Because, as we know, if the trials number are more, our results will be more accurate. So we increase our trial number to 10 to 1,000. And uh, this is our result chart. This, uh, from this, you can see very clearly the trend. One, um, when our simulation steps uh, goes up to 10,000, we can see that the variance uh, is dependent on the time. When the time goes, when the time increases, our variance also increases, and it's very beautiful. And also, we can see that the upside and the downside, they are almost the same. So after we calculate the average of these results, we can get um, a result that's similar to our initial price, which also um, the same with our um, result previously, that the average return is close to zero. Then um, we use our Monte Carlo simulation to predict all the six, all the six dots, and uh, we can get the result by calculating the average of these ten thousand prices. From this chart, we can see that the predictive price and the initial price they are very similar. Maybe this is because the uh, expected return is close to zero, and uh, this predictive price is very valuable in real life because this predicted price in the three days later can help the traders to um, make their trading strategies and uh, this result is very helpful. So uh, I have uh, introduced the uh, Monte Carlo simulation and uh, this is our project. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs>